Hey everyone, so another day of ISPO is behind us. This would be day three of five and as the other, like the other two days, today I also scoured through the expo area a little for you, for, for you to find a few more interesting products and things that we will be talking about or maybe using next year. So since yesterday's focus was more on the ISPO winners and skis, uh, today we will be focusing more on safety equipment. Uh, I will be going through some beacons and some safety innovations from Peeps and from Black Diamond, also from Ortovox, which all came to market with some new products. You know, I used to use my old uh, Peeps beacon, that is still the analog one, for ages. This device had an infinite range of 60 meters, but you had to know how to use it. So yeah, see it's beeping. You had this slider that you put to the range and then the closer you came, the more it was. Now these days we tend to use more uh, advanced devices like this uh, Peeps uh, BT micro button beacon. It's small, it's light, better, runs on one battery, it has about a hundred an hour, hours of uh, time. You turn it on like this, Peeps, see? Now, my old beacon picked something up, and that's how it used to work. The closer you came, you shifted and beeped. It was kind of like a sonar, you know, you had to move and then you had to change direction. Now we put it in send mode. With the new beacons, of course, it's easier. You just flip it out, put it into search mode, and follow the arrows. Oh, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, that's it. Very simple to use, very intuitive, and very quick. Also with the arrows, it's much lighter, much easier for, for you to actually switch and to just follow the directions. One thing that I really don't like about this, these things, see, stowed away, sending again, you're safe. Uh, what I don't like is that with these beacons, people used to become lazy, you know, uh, they just look at the screen where the arrow points and yeah, well, they don't look around. They don't look for poles which might be lying somewhere or something. Now, there were some, there is a very interesting innovation coming from Ortovox this year for, for, for this, uh, which I will go over in a minute. But just one thing about beacons, you know, there was some controversy about the plastic uh, switch on the Peeps beacons. Um, as for every beacon, I will say I've been using the Ortovox and Peeps beacons, also the DSPs for a while and they always worked. I never had problems with the buttons. I don't know what you have to do to crush a button like that, but it does happen. So if it did happen to you, check it. If it doesn't stick where it's supposed to be or it slides into certain positions, send it to them and they will replace it. So like any other product, somewhat product recall or maybe product recall i think they didn't make a product recall here because the product was on the market it's end of life so yeah why make a product recall regardless uh send it in they'll check it out send it back to you there will be no problems i think the idea of these devices is to keep you safe but also another idea is that maybe don't be like me and keep this thing running around for a decade before you get a new one like i would say keep a beacon for three to five years and then start considering getting a new one now this thing still works perfectly well, but what most fr your friends won't know about this analog beacon is that because it's an analog beacon in a multivarial scenario, it can overshadow signals from others, so your mark function will not work. You see, there are all these technical implications with these devices that uh, you need to update them from time to time, just so you keep yourself and your friends safe. Unless you're going to be the ego guy who you the only one who wants to be found, then by all means keep this. <laughs> okay. So let's go continue with uh, the innovations on the beacon front and let's go check out what Ortovox had in store for ISPO this year. Okay, so we're back at <coughs> the screen where my capture device wanted to capture the calculator. Well, great, that's not going to help us. 
<coughs> okay, since we were talking about beacons and mine is still sending, I might just turn it off. Click, it's off. Mm. Um, Ortovox hasn't, you know, um, hasn't developed any new beacons for a while now, but apparently they have a new one which is called the Ortovox Direct 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 Voice. Why is it not direct? Direct voice. Di di direct, I guess. So, <coughs> among all the marketing mumbo jumbo, you have to consider this. This thing, basically, it looks like it does go with the micro thing because beacons are getting smaller, the technology is getting smaller, processors are getting faster, it's eating less power. So, basically, small things like this these days are as useful as big beacons used to be in the old times. You don't even feel them when you have them on you. It's super, super convenient. Now, what the beacons with uh, with uh, showing you the way with the arrows do is they don't have you focus. And this is where they had an innovative idea. It's basically a combination of what the uh, old Ortovox used to do. This one, you know, with the beeping and the new one with the arrows so they taught it how to talk so it says keep to the right go down the snow surface walk straight ahead you know things like that now I haven't seen any demos except for this little video here which I'm going to play now So you will have this mechanized computer voice guide you to the buried victim. I will, very interesting to see how this will work and uh, well yeah it should also apparently says it has a reliable power supply that works at I minus 20. Yeah we all know that AA batteries are the best. Fuck lithium ion. So yeah and it also has an integrated reco reflector or as I like to call it death burial search. Uh, Cool thing, cool thing. So this is one. Then another new beacon that will reach the market is the Black Diamond Recon Light, or LT as they call it. Well, as usual, you know that Peeps is owned by Black Diamond, so this is basically a new, maybe, if you see the picture and you see the little micro, looks like a micro with a bit of a different design and it seems to have speaker or seeker, I don't know. It seems to have a few other functions than this BD micro. I don't know if it can talk too. It didn't, they didn't say that. And I was looking for some more information and basically the only thing I found was this little video from freeride.com that sneak peeks the whole thing. Like you can watch it, uh, just go to freeride.com, Black Diamond Recon LT. It's a three minute video where they explain the use of the uh, beacon. Connection, so you can uh, update it by yourself. The it does have Bluetooth, like the, the, the micro BT button, um, maybe has a few other features. It's a bit of a different design than this one. Maybe it's an updated design. Uh, more details I couldn't find for now, but it looks like a decent beacon. The price range is probably going to be like this one. You have to understand that the micro BT is a little more expensive than the other beacons, but Hey, you know, safety first, right? <laughs> okay, so that's for the beacons. And now let's, before we uh, continue, maybe one interesting thing I noticed, uh, as usual every day, today we have live stream on ISPO Munich day three uh, for the public live stream. I was going through that one and I, uh, they were uh, doing market, re as basically people from Terex added us, were sharing with us their market research trends and they were quite interesting. <coughs> Apparently post-COVID and all this stuff, uh, they seem to have uh, changed uh, the, the, the entire behavior of the boomers and everybody else, how the, 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 the consumer segments are varied. This might be interesting information for our shop owners uh, who are watching like my uh, sponsor friends from Extreme Vital or other, other, other shops in, this, in Slovenia. It would be interesting to know if these 
uh, metrics that they found out on an apparel survey would also uh, would also be applicable to Slovenia. Uh, I don't know. I probably I doubt it. Actually, I mostly doubt it because we're so small. Okay, that was an interesting fun fact that I found along the way. Now let's go back to the ISPO area. And today, uh, one more thing uh, I wanted to share with you are a few innovations. Now. Uh, also, again, ISPO award winners, uh, and we'll start with Mammut. Mammut made an interesting tool, which is called the Climb Climbax, Climbax, the world's first climbing tracker. Now, uh, some of you use the uh, sports watches like my Sunto here. I have a Spartan Ultra. Was crappy at the beginning, is a great watch now. Uh, Okay, there are better ones on the market because it's old and new ones have preceded it, but it gets the navigation done on the glaciers in white out tested, works, didn't fall into any crevasses. Um, so the Mammoth Climax is the first climbing tracker and I would really be interested in how this thing works. You know, it's not GPS based, is it like gyro based, it's two armbands uh, that you put on your hand and uh, then you track your moves, I guess. that is interesting. You can check performance and achievements in the climbing app. So basically the more of this gamification that is going on in the sports, especially in the health sports industry, like with uh, Nintendo putting stuff on your uh, switches and stuff like that. So yeah, that was an interesting innovation I found. Now, Every day we also have to go through some ski innovations and that was one of the selection uh, of the ISPO brand new <laughs> fun little thing. It's an insert ice line scorpion climb up with your downhill bindings. So basically if you have downhill bindings on some powder skis and would like to hike up instead of changing the whole binding setup you just insert this little adapter thingy. It's a pin adapter for an alpine binding so like for example with the lange freeride uh, boot that i used to have it would look like this so you would put it into this what is this is a marker a marker binding i don't know if it's a chest or some marker binding you put it in and then you or a salomon binding and then you can hike up just by with a bit of a level so <laughs> An interesting little thing for your side country slacking if you need or if you get stuck somewhere and have to hike up. I mean, the idea is interesting more from the aspect that this is a safety device. So if you get stuck somewhere and need to hike back up, the snow is too deep, general, or just need to do 200 meters and don't want boot back till you're uh, in snow with your head. It's a really cool idea. And uh, it can probably be 3D printed from what I want, seriously, but the PU has to. 3D print PU is not going to work with this, but the prototypes, I mean, it's a cool little thing. So not much for skiing. Then the next thing I wanted to talk about today is goggles. Now goggles, we all use goggles. We, And then you start using goggles, then you see that you have to have a, a goggle for good weather, a goggle for bad weather, then it's fine to have a clear goggle when you're uh, skiing at uh, at night. So I checked a few of them, like I myself uh, from my board uh, shop sponsor Extreme Vital, I get Oakley's. So I am a fan of the Prism. It has extremely good uh, lenses uh, and it's really cool. I mean, I can, I can, we can check and I can show you how quickly you can change the lenses on the Prism. Just that is something cool. so prisms this is the airbrake xl that i like to use it's basically has a really cool mechanism you have like these side things here that extend a little and you get a pouch with a second pair of lenses so if you scratch your first pair or like i did on this one on the tree the second pair you can quickly swap them out or if the weather changes to bad, it's a big trend. Now a lot of them use magnetic holding systems. Um, for example, my brother uses a 
a different set from uh, from from uh, what was it from not from Alpina but from uh, Brico that has like a magnetic seal mechanism. This one works differently. You just click this lever up here. You pop out the lens. Take the other lens. Pop it back on. Just click, click, click. Lower this back in. And voila, you're good to go. Boom, for bad weather. Also, I like the Airbrake XL because your viewport is high. The only thing I don't like is that sometimes it extends outside a lot and you can exactly see down. It, you lose a bit of viewport down, but you get a lot of viewport to the, to the side. So yeah, that's Oakley Prisms. You can get them at Extreme Vital in Slovenia. I think I'm not there, the, the sole distributor, but yeah, you can get them for a good price there. Um, Always remember, good goggles make skiing easier. If the weather is bad, contrasts are bad. You don't want to be stuck in a whiteout with a goggle with a sun lens. And vice versa, you don't want to have a, ride a sunny day in the reds of a bad weather lens. So you also have photochromatic lenses. This one is photochromatic, which changes according to the conditions of the lightning conditions. But remember, with photochromatic lenses, you basically, it's not one lens that fits all. You have photochromatic lenses for good weather to semi-bad weather, and then you have photochromatic lenses from semi-bad to really bad weather. So keep that in mind when you buy those. Also check before you buy them, because the photochromatics are considerably different between uh, companies. For example, uh, my old Salomon photochromatics here. This was, a, I don't remember the model, I think it was a one. Um, it's considerably different to, adapts considerably differently to the prism. Uh, last year Oakley also introduced a fancy new electronic system which I tried at ISPO, it was interesting but I don't think electronics and goggles are the way to go. So, okay, so much for that, but let's get back to the other goggles that I wanted to show you. Okay, so uh, as you see Oakley has a few new ones this season too. Uh, um, this one is the flight deck. I'm actually for next season. I'm probably interested in the flight deck. With this one looks cool. Uh, L size maximizes field of view. I'm always for more field of view, you know. Then another one was the Alpina. This is a new innovation that I found very interesting. So basically, it has a magnetic lock mechanism, but it has two lenses, and one lens goes over the other. So you just remove it, click, remove it, and flip it back on. So unlike my uh, Airbrake XLs, uh, where you have to flip the mechanism, put it back in, you just chuck, chuck. Uh, it's faster. Now, double goggle, fogging, I don't know how this is going to work. I would ha one would have to test it. You can get them in different colors, uh, photo bl blue, photochromatic, normal, polarized, non-polarized. Uh, just uh, one thing, like when you buy goggles, just make sure that uh, that you put them on and consider your use scenario. Because um, I know a lot of shops sell these goggles and the people who sell them don't even know about uh, much about goggles and uh, the ratings of how much light can pass through and anything. So do your homework for these kind of things at home because the ratings from different manufacturers are relatively different. I mean, you have a scale which should cover most of them in the same way, but it's, there's a lot of nuances. Okay, so uh, so much for the goggles. Then, yeah, when we're at goggles, I saw these things. You probably saw these in edits from a few years ago or maybe last year in America. There was a lot of a uh, goggle sock. It's like a little cover for your goggles when you are outside. Uh, so basically, like when you're hiking up or when it's snowing, you put one of these. I mean, I, I w I'm a sucker for wolfy husky designs. So this one is one that I would probably get. Like, it's really cool. Looks really cool just for funsies. Uh, and since we were talking about goggles, of course, every goggle, when you're wearing goggles, you also need to wear a helmet for security, uh, especially when we do schema mountaineering. Um, I like uh, more mountaineering oriented helmets that are light and have a good, uh, good uh, uh, 
airflow and also have like all the um, the 3D foam absorption, blah, 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 mumbo jumbo is also uh, important that they have good ratings. Now, uh, this is an ISPO award gold winner from Cebe, the versatile product title is versatile. It's a modular helmet uh, and uh, it looks really interesting. Um, now, how modular it is, I don't understand. Maybe you can remove this part. It seems like you can remove this part and maybe just use it for honor. It's uh, it has a double certification for skiing and mountaineering, which is really cool because uh, I have uh, the Sol Solomon's Light helmet, which is only certified basically for skiing, but I do use it for mountaineering mostly as well. Uh, now, whether it would protect my head if a big stone falls on me remains to be seen. Fortunately, until now, that hasn't happened. But yeah, that would probably be a, ga a helmet that I would uh, be interested in testing. And uh, it also looks banger. So that is a cool thing. Uh, now, another thing that I wanted to touch on before we go for today, because we're going to keep the episode a little shorter, uh, shorter today, uh, is... Uh, the Kikma. Um, I mentioned West Skateboarding and the Kikma in my first video and uh, didn't say much about it later because I had audio problems in the first stream. So I found this concept to be really interesting. It's a magnetic binding for a kickboard. Uh, so basically it uh, would separate the board if you fell or if you did a big jump and uh, so that you don't uh, hurt your feet. Now, it would be like super awesome if this thing could be adapted to snow use. Just imagine a magnetic lock for your uh, snowboard. Or that would be like something like really cool. Like you wouldn't need to go into step bindings or anything like that. No additional weight, just a clean design with a click mechanism, like a space boot. You know, I found the concept really cool because it reminds me of space boot in Expanse or other science, like science fiction shows where, where you just click when you walk on something, you know? Really cool design. So check, the, check them out if you're... Uh, wakeboarder or a kiter, kiter this might be the thing for you in the future okay so i think uh, we touched on everything for today uh, shout out to my sponsors at the store of extreme vital so if you need uh, if you're looking for goggles or any kind of equipment like that go check them out uh, especially for the oakley's and uh, tomorrow's stream might be a little later because I have to go get some ski stuff done or I might post it on Friday. So maybe Friday I will post two of them. Uh, we will talk about uh, safety backpacks, avalanche airbag backpacks and about poles because I have some new stuff from Leki to show you. And well, more on that tomorrow. See you then and thanks for watching. Also, remember to subscribe. That's what people are supposed to say in these streams, right? <laughs> well, subscribe if you want if, or if you don't. But just uh, if you have any questions regarding any of these things, just uh, leave me a note uh, on the Insta, uh, Instagram TV or on, the, on, the, uh, on Twitch or on the Discord, which you can see on the left up. Uh, go check out my blog. I think the last story I posted was about how to travel skiing on a pandemic. I'll be posting a, full, a bit more new content uh, by the weekend or by next week, depending on the weather. And uh, until then, have a good one and thanks for watching.